right. Good morning, our Redeemers. A good morning, friends of our Redeemers. Anyone joining us this morning on Facebook Live for our worship service. Uh, I want to welcome you to the service today. I want to uh, ask you to, to grab your cup of coffee and, and uh, sit back and, and enjoy the, the service today. I hope it's a, a meaningful, inspirational time for you this morning. So I'm going to begin a couple announcements here this morning before we, uh, before we launch in. I just want to remind everybody that today um, in Column at the City Park, it's going to be an outdoor event um, attempting to you know, uh, try and make it safer for everybody. Uh, there's a farewell to Pastor Chimizie Bucano, and that's from 2 to 4 p.m. That's going to be uh, a come and go type thing. So. Uh, if, if, if you want to make the trip over and, and, and just to say, you know, show appreciation and, and, and to say thank you and, and farewell, that, that can, you can do that today at 2 to 4 p.m. So just uh, make, that, make that note at the Cullum City Park over by the pool. Uh, the Edgeley Community VBS uh, Team Up with Jesus is the title this year uh, that is going to be held at the Church of the Living Word. Uh, the, the, the church, Our Redeemers, uh, last year uh, worked together with them to do it. Uh, this year, they are just doing it, the Lit Church of the Living Word, and our Redeemers, uh, they've invited all people to come if you're comfortable sending your kids uh, or grandkids, but it's, it's certainly not um, mandatory. It's just, it's just you know, the times we live in. So, uh, nonetheless, do want to make you aware that they are holding VBS this year. Uh, that is for children ages 4 to 12, um, July 26th through the 30th. So, you can look for more on, on Facebook as well for that. Uh, by the way, I, I mentioned, I'll, I usually mention, you can download this or find this on Facebook. Just, just go and click on it and it'll come up. That's the, you'll have the announcements and prayer concerns. And the service we have. So, uh, prayer concerns and requests, I want to mention just a couple of things. Um, uh, this morning I, I spoke briefly with uh, Danette Schweiger and she had, she had said that that uh, Dave is doing quite well after his surgery earlier this year, and so said that he could come off the prayer list, which is it's always, in some ways, it's good news to have to uh, to be able to come off the prayer list, right? So we're we're thankful for that. We celebrate that that he is doing well, um, but there are many that are still on the prayer list, and so we just continue to pray for each and every one of these. Um, please take some time. I don't have any I don't have any updates on any of them this morning, but take some time to read through um, throughout the week. Keep these individuals in your prayer uh, that are listed in our in our bulletin. Um, I will I will continue to pray for them here uh, later in the service as we get to the prayers of the people. Okay, uh, I don't think we have any other announcements. Is there anything that didn't get printed that I missed or need to include? No. Okay. All right. That being said, um, let's uh, begin this morning on page 56. If you do have your green hymnal, please turn there for the uh, order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. 
To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and he bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, at this time, if you have your hymnal, we're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy. It's page 165. Um, Sarah and I will lead you in that, and we'll be using the guitar. So let's get set up here. Sarah's a little, little extra excited because we uh, we didn't have a chance to really work on the song as much as we wanted to, and uh, so she's a little nervous that I told her right before we started it's in, a, in an entirely different key, but you'll pick up on it quickly. So I just <laughs> okay. So um, holy, holy, holy. Uh, page one sixty five. If you want to follow along.
Okay, at this time, uh, we'll have you turn, if you have your, uh, your, your bulletin printed out and you want to join with us in the prayer of the day, uh, you can find that on there. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us to live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, this time we'll have the readers uh, today's for today's readings come forward.
obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. Here ends the reading. The Gospel reading today is uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 13, beginning verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in a bundle to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy is the one who sow, that sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out, weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace. There, they will be weep there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. Okay, the message today, uh, as I was reading through these, these various texts and that you've just heard read, um, I, kind of, I kind of saw a theme that, 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 that comes through in all of them that I want to just share with you today. I want to kind of, I want to kind of tie all of these together um, along the lines of this theme. And it's not a theme that's readily apparent necessarily. It's not a theme that um, uh, 
just comes through on the surface, but yet it's 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 really at the heart of what's going on in each of these texts. But I also want to go back a little bit to last week. If you remember last week, we uh, we the parable that that Jesus talked about was the parable of the soils, or the, I'm sorry, the parable of the sower, which in many ways is about the soil. And we talk about these different places that the seed can fall. The, the seed can fall on the, on, the, on, the, on the rocky soil. The seed can fall uh, where the thorns um, come up and infest it. The, the seed can fall on the good soil. Um, and the seed can fall, where's the, what's the third one, fourth one? Well, the birds eat it. The birds eat it, yes. <laughs> the birds come in. Sunflowers. So if you grow sunflowers, um, you know all about that one. Uh, or soybeans and the geese come and eat them, right? So, so we talked about these different things with the parable, and, and at the very end, um, I kind of made a point that I want to start with today. So I'm going to get into that here in, in, in just a minute, but the title of the message is Grace Abounds, right? I mean, Grace Abounds. I want, I want you guys to hear that title several times, Grace Abounds, Um. There is there is a, a a verse in 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 Romans that I that I was uh, uh, going to start with and I and I and I I had read it through but forgot to write it down but but in it Paul says um, where in it Paul says where sin abounded grace abounded even more and Sarah can you can you can you find where that text is like in real time here so I can make sure to give that text so they don't think I'm making it up. I'm not making it up. Where sin abounded, Paul writes, grace abounded even more. And so that verse is what was in my mind as I was writing this message this week. And so the title is Grace Abounds. And, and I think as we look at Jesus' um, parables, what we find in his parables is, 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 is subversive. You have a surface reading, and then Jesus himself even always is giving another reading. But what Jesus is always doing, even behind that, is giving a description of the kingdom of God. Jesus is always doing something more in these parables than you might imagine. You got it? Romans 5.20. Romans 5.20. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 5.20. It says there, the law, the law was added so that the trespass might increase, but... Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that just as sin reigned in, in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness. To bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't that great? Romans 5.20. Write that, mess, write that verse down. Where sin abounded, grace abounded even more. So today I'm going to talk about the ways in which we see grace abounding through these, through these parables and also in our reading from Romans today. Um, we're going to talk about gratuitous grace, um, going back to last week. We're going to talk about a patient grace, going into our, uh, our parable here this week. And then we're going to talk about a hope-generating, a hopeful, but a hope-generating grace. Um, that we see coming in Romans. So first of all, a gratuitous grace. Um, last week in our, in our reading, we talked about um, the ways in which Jesus um, described the scattering of the seed. And we talked about how, how, how we respond to that particular scattering of seed. And I also mentioned at the very end of last week that if we're honest with ourselves, we're probably not any one of those soils, but we're all of those soils at different times. And it's here that I want to I wanna just really um, point out how, how incredible this, this parable is. Because what a farmer does, if, if, you know, from, what I, from what I can tell as being a farmer myself, we don't like... The soil, the rocky soil, or the gravel. We don't, we don't turn on the drill or the planter. 
before we get in the, the, the soil or the, the field where there's good soil, um, we, wait, we wait till there's good soil, and that's the only place we put our seed, right? That's the only place we put our seed. And so um, as, as we think of this parable, I was caught off guard in some ways by the way in which Jesus describes it as being the, the seed, the word of God. God himself, Jesus himself, scattering this seed. And he doesn't only scatter it on the good soil, but he scatters it everywhere. And it's this way in which grace, grace is not something that, that, that God waits for you to be good soil. God doesn't wait for you to, 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 to be the thing that's going to respond, the thing that's going to produce, the thing that... You don't have to get it together before God is going to give you a chance. Right? That's, that's the point here. So Jesus is describing this parable. And so we see, even at the very, at the very, at the very beginning of this parable, how, how grace is something that God is scattering at all times everywhere. Right? Now, we might respond to that grace in different ways, but it's never withheld. So whether you find yourself to be that rocky soil, whether you find yourself to be overcrowded, like 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 your thorns that are that are that are causing you to worry, causing you uh, whatever you're you're chasing after different things in life, the, what, the deceitfulness of riches, I think, is what it says in the text, right? In in our um, in our text from last week, in the parable of the of the of the sower. No matter where you're at, grace is being scattered toward you. And ultimately, what God, what God desires is for you to be responsive to that grace. And when you're responsive to the grace, you become the good soil. You become the, you become the space hmm. where, 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 where God's um, grace takes hold. Right? But it comes to all of us, no matter where we're at. That's the first good news today. That's how grace abounds. And like I said, I, the first point today, I'm kind of harkening back to last week. So if you weren't here last week, I'm sorry um, if you didn't pick up on all of that. It's, it's the parable of the soils. You can go back, take some time to read it. I didn't want to do two sermons today, but I, but I wanted to make that point because it's a good one. Okay? So grace abounds, gratuitous grace, meaning more than you need, right? Gratuitous. It's a, it's a great word. It's just... It's the way that grace works. It's the way that God works. It's more than you need. And that's why you can just scatter it everywhere. And then today in our, in our, in our, in our parable, we have the, the, the story of, of, of the weeds, the parable of, of the weeds, right? Um, growing with the wheat. And I want to talk here about patient grace. Patient grace also abounds. Um, there's... I read this story and I think to myself, my goodness, I'm glad that that hasn't become like a thing for, for, for people to start doing. You go and you get water hemp seeds or kosher seeds and you, and you go and you, you know, sabotage, people sabotage other people's fields with these. I mean, evidently thousands of years ago, that was something that maybe would have happened, but it sounds rough, right? That would be terrible. That would be absolutely terrible. Think about that, though. For you farmers out there, um, you know, and even if you're not a farmer, there are these weeds that are terribly difficult to control. And, you know, there's a lot of money spent uh, to, to try and do so. And here you have this, this story Jesus tells of somebody, somebody going and, 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 and literally sabotaging another farmer's field with these weeds. Well, if that happened, as a farmer, you'd see the weeds growing and you'd be like, this is terrible. We need to get these out. We need to pluck them out. We need to spray them. We need to kill them. We need to do whatever we can to get rid of these weeds, right? Well, that's kind of the point here. There's the, along the lines of, the, of this parable, we see the patience of God's grace. In the first parable last week, we saw the, the, the gratuitousness of it, the, the, the abundance of it, right? Today we see the patience of God's grace, right? Because what happens in our parable today? 
Well, in our parable, the enemy comes, and then the servants say, do you want us to go get rid of these weeds? And the, and the, and the, the owner says, no, let them grow, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. So let them grow together until the harvest. Right? What I see in this story, what I see in this parable, is patience. Is patience saying, God is not, God is not looking at his creation. He's not looking at each and every individual human being at the moment in time and judging them eternally. Mm -hmm. But he's giving them a chance. He's giving all of us a chance to grow and to demonstrate that in our growth, we come to know God, we come to know the kingdom of God, we come to know Jesus Christ in a way that now transforms us from what might be considered weeds to being something that is harvestable, right? Now there's different, there's all, all sorts of different things happening in this, in this parable, and, and don't get me wrong, I mean, there's, there's judgment described in this parable. I'm not, I'm not sweeping that under the rug at all. But what I want to say is that there's also good news. There's always good news in the gospel. The gospel means a un gelion. It means good news in Greek. And the good news in this gospel is that no matter where you're at, God's giving you time. God's giving you time to, like last week, receive the seed, receive his grace, and he's giving you time to be transformed. That if you feel like a weed, if you look like a weed, he doesn't want to rush to judgment. He wants to give you time. Now there will come a time when, 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 when uh, clarity comes. But until that time, there is always an opportunity. There is always an opportunity to, to turn and allow the grace of God, this patient grace, to come. Jesus, uh, Peter says in, in, in his book, um, again, these verses are just coming to my mind as I'm preaching, so I might have to ask Sarah to look it up again. I got like this. Um, but it, uh, paraphrasing it, um, God, is, God, God is not hoping that any should perish, but he is patient, hoping that eventually all turn to him. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's not this, like, there's not this, this, this is this God that you can imagine who's who's just kind of deciding that you're in, you're out, you know, and I, and, I, and and gets somehow like a certain amount of um, uh, that he he gains anything from the separation and from the exclusion, but he desires that all would eventually turn. To him. He desires that all would turn, and and it, and it says that he's patient. In so we have today grace abounding in a gratuitous way and in a patient way. And then lastly, in a, in a hope-generating way. And this I want to I want to turn to Romans, where Paul speaks here in Romans 8. Again, one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. And what Sarah wrote, uh, read. Okay, so, you, however, are not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit, Paul writes, of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive to righteousness. And if the Spirit who raised him from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Therefore, we have an obligation not to the sinful nature, but if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again, but you received the spirit of sonship, by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. Now I consider 
The present sufferings not worth comparing to the glory that would be revealed in us. The creation, now listen to this part, the creation, which includes everything. It includes you and me, it creates. It includes the creation itself. Paul writes, the creation waits eagerly in expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage and decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. And then it says, For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what, is all, what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. All right. Hope generating grace. You see, the grace, the grace here is the grace of the Spirit. Throughout this text, Paul is, is, is the thread that runs through this entire text is his emphasis on the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, he calls it at different times. And it's this Spirit that, that we come to find in Romans becomes for us, in our spirit, a down payment of what is to come. So it's the sense that as we, as we receive the Spirit of God, it gives us a certain grace to withstand whatever is in the present because we have a taste of what is coming in the future. So it is a grace that is a hope-generating grace, right? And just as Paul writes here about the creation, it says, it's a creation that waits in eager anticipation. Groaning. What does he say? We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly. So you and me, friends, if you have accepted Christ, if you are a follower of Christ, the Holy Spirit has been given to you. And that Holy Spirit, what Paul writes here, is the first fruits of what God is doing to restore the whole of creation. What God is doing to redeem the whole of creation. And as those first fruits are in us, that is a grace given to us. It is a grace that generates hope. And that's the hope that, that Paul speaks of here when he says, for in this hope, we are saved. It's this hope, it's this hope that actually causes something in us to long for a redeemed world, to long for things to be better. You know, um, we're in a time where I think all of us long for things to be better. You know, no matter what, there are periods in our lives where things are hard, and we long for things to change. We long for, we long to be healed when we're, when we're sick. We long to be joyful when we're depressed. We long, we long for rest when we're tired. But the whole world now longs for the innocence of of, of being able to just go out and be with friends. To go to, um, to, go to Walmart and, and, and pick up groceries without, without fear of, of illness and sickness. You know, we long, for, we long for something right now. And as a society and as individuals, we're all longing for this. I think this is, this is a very pertinent message today. Because... You know, here we are, you know, week 20, I don't know, month 4, and, and things actually aren't any better. Things haven't improved. In fact, things are getting worse from a data perspective. Cases of the coronavirus are increasing throughout the world, and especially in our country, and even in North Dakota. Um, and so... We long for things to change. We long to come to the point where 
You know, we don't have to wonder about whether meeting in church is safe, whether schools are safe, whether all these things, these questions and these decisions we're going to have to be making. We, we don't want that. So no matter how, you know, our lives might be different than what the lives of the people Paul is talking to, who, who in many ways were suffering in different ways. Like Paul writes, he says, I consider our present sufferings not worthy of comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. So God is doing something in us. And whether it's the sufferings of those Christians 2,000 years ago, or the sufferings we experience today, God is doing something in us where a glory is being revealed. Something is being revealed that generates hope. And it's not something we only wait for, but something that is actually beginning now. That's why the, we are the first fruits of the Spirit. Grace abounds indeed. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you today for um, the message that comes to us through Matthew, uh, the Gospel writer of Matthew, the message of Jesus through there in the parables, the message of Paul in Romans, that all together is, is a message of grace, that grace does indeed abound. That it is gratuitous, that you scatter it to all of us, no matter where we're at in our lives. Lord God, that you are patient, no matter if we've received it or not. And Lord, that ultimately, when we receive that grace, that it's something that generates transformation and hope within us. That it is the first fruits of what you're doing, not only in this world, but in our lives. So we pray, Lord God, as, as your followers, we pray as your church, that not only would, would the grace that abounds from you transform us, but that we would show uh, that we would show abounding grace to those around us. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, today for our hymn of the day, we're going to do um, a fitting song, right? Amazing Grace. <laughs> We still have you with us? We still connected? Yeah. Hey, I saw a uh, um, uh, I, I have words. <laughs> I was listening to 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 a, to a sermon. Uh, I've listened to many sermons online here in the last weeks and months, but one pastor individual uh, in particular, he uh, he does something that encourages those who are on Facebook watching or or YouTube, whatever it might be, um, to to inter to interact a little bit more uh, by just saying, you know, and you can type in s certain things along the way, and, he, and they call it a chat on YouTube, but for for us, it's, I don't know what it's called, but you can type things in, right? Because I know a lot of you say hi and things like that, and it's wonderful, and I love hearing from you. But um, as we're singing, and as you heard the message today, I want, why don't you just take a, take a chance and um, just type in a quick quick thought from the sermon, whatever stuck out to you, you know? Just, uh, just, just it could be two or three words, just like, this is what really stuck out, this is what's going to stick with me this week, and share that on there so that everybody else can see it too. And then I can see if, if you were listening to the sermon. No, man. No, no. Just, just to be a little bit more interactive, and it would be kind of fun. So anyway, take some time if you're watching today. Type into the chat there what, what it is that stuck out to you. Um, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing that. So, yeah, maybe we can do that every week. Okay, so let's, uh, I don't know, what's the page number if people want to sing along? 448, I think. 448. Amazing Grace.
Okay, at this time, uh, we'll, we'll do the Apostles' Creed together. You can say it in your own home, page 65, if you need us in the bulletin, or in the hymnal. We believe in, we believe in, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we come before you today in prayer, and we first come before you in worship. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for what you have created, for the beautiful the earth that you've created, the place that you have put us. We thank you for the life that you've given us, the friends and the family, the church family, loved ones, neighbors. Lord, we praise you and we honor you today. We ascribe worth to you today. We thank you, God. We thank you for your church for your church here and around the world, uh, for, what you are, for what you are doing each and every day, by scattering grace, by patiently waiting for that grace to take hold, and by putting within us, through that grace, your spirit of first fruits, that we can, that we can shine brightly in a darkened world, that we can be like a, like a city on a hill, Lord, that, that, that the world that needs you, that wants meaning, that wants hope in the midst of these difficult times would see your church and would find that hope, would find that meaning, would find that salvation. Lord, we pray that your whole people would reflect this abundant grace that you show us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Today we pray for the nations again. We pray for each nation of this world as we continue to, to, to battle this, this, the coronavirus. We know that there are many nations that have uh, got it under control in many ways. And, and we, we thank you for, 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 for seeing that op opportunity. Um, I pray for our own nation today, Lord, specifically that, um, that you would come against the spirit of division that, that, that starts out in politics but now has made its way to public health. And I pray that you would give us all a common mindset that we are in this together and that ultimately we fight this pandemic as one, not as individuals. And so help us, Lord God, to show grace to one another. Help us, help us to, to be kind to one another, to show care for one another by taking the precautions that are necessary to, 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 to limit the spread of this, this harmful disease. And whatever that looks like, Lord God, give each of us, um, give each of us the strength um, to be a good neighbor in that way, to be a, a gracious neighbor. And, and however that looks, Lord God, give us, give us the ability to step outside of the division that exists and the confusion. Lord, I come against the spirit of confusion that just seems to be so present in this pandemic here in America. I mean, I look around the world and I see, I see other nations that, that, that have come against this as one, and I pray that you would give us just a spirit of, 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 of seeing the good of, of the whole and doing what we need to do to end this nightmare, to end this this. this this nightmare that is not fake, that has killed 140,000 Americans and infected 4 million and is growing by the day. Help us, God, to, 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 to just take an honest look and to do what we can do as people who desire the truth and want to know the truth, what we can do to love one another and to love ourselves as you have loved us in this time. Lord, I pray this for our nation, and I pray, Lord, in your mercy, that you would hear our prayer. God, I pray for those in need today. Um, several we have prayed for for, for many weeks and, and months continue to hold up to you. Mike Baruvka, Wayne Heinrich, Diane Feist, Lloyd, Lane Froelich, Corey Nitsky, Jerry Lugadensky, Steve Lambert, Melissa Powers, Pastor Eppen, Helen Seafelt. Lord God, myself, as I am continuing to make progress, Myron Loden and Fredati, Lord God, each of these people in their own ways fighting for health and for strength and for wholeness. Lord, you have the keys to health. You have the strength that you can give. I pray, Lord God, an extra blessing of health and healing upon each of these people today. Lord, for those needs that are represented by each person listening today, that they carry with them each day, I, I pray that you would meet those needs in whatever way, Lord God, their heart and their spirit desires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord God, I pray for this church as we continue to meet together online, Lord, it's such a it's 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 a difficult time and difficult to make the, the right decisions. I know that everybody has their opinions. And we have chosen to do what we felt is most cautious. Yet I feel like you continue to work mightily through this Facebook feed, through YouTube, that you've held us together as a church. And I thank you for that. And I pray, Lord God, that for anyone in the church who is feeling left out, who is feeling lonely, who's feeling as though they're not part of it that you would cause them to reach out to someone in the church, to reach out to me. Lord, that we could re-engage, that we could make sure that each of us are feeling that we are still part of this family. Lord God, I pray that for this church today, and I pray, this, it, that, I, I pray that I ask for your mercy, that you would hear our prayer. So into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you haven't had a chance yet to type something into the chat that you want to share with others that you've taken from the message today or the service at all today, please take some time to do that. Uh, in the meantime, though, I want, I want to leave you with this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you with an abundance of grace. May the Lord be gracious to you, and may the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you back here next week. Take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah.